Nicola Palmer is a senior lecturer in criminal law at King's College London, and she joins us now. And Nicola, how significant is this arrest? I think it's very significant for uh, for the residual mechanism, which was set up to complete the work of the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. And I think it's also significant for France and for Rwanda. It's significant for France because for an extended period, they've refused to extradite individuals to um, stand trial in Rwanda. Um, and this will be an interesting question as to whether the Rwandan government will now try to obtain jurisdiction over this case when the, although the UNICTR's indictment remains in place. Uh, right. Uh, Nicola, how is it even possible that he was hiding all this time uh, in Paris with a fake identity? So there are actually a number of um, suspected genocidiers that have been in France for, for an extended period of time. There have been 20 cases in which uh, Rwanda has has requested extraditions for suspected genocidiers from France, and up to this stage, those extraditions have been denied. Uh, so I think that there's a there is a strong network that he would have been able to draw on. Um, and in addition, I understand that he got support um, from his immediate family. What does this mean for the victims and their families? I mean, 26 years later. It remains hugely significant. Uh, there are, especially considering the, the death toll and the continued concern and, and that Rwandan um, survivors of the genocide have for these cases. And it's important to note that a large number of these suspects, um, the pursuit of them has been enabled by Rwandan survivor networks in the Rwandan diaspora around the world. Nicola, what happens now uh, to Kabuga? So he's been arrested. What's the protest now legally? So from, an, from the perspective of an international criminal lawyer, he will be transferred to the International Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals, which was set up by the United Nations Security Council in, in 2010 as part of the completion strategy for the UNICTR. Um, so he will now be transferred and be tried by this residual mechanism. I do, however, as I said, think that the Rwandan government will try to challenge the jurisdiction of the International Court. Nicola Palmer, thanks so much for your insight for us here at TRT World.